Welcome back, boys and girls. I'm Lloyd, author of Practical Robotics in C++. In this episode of Practical Robotics, I'm going to show you how to hack probably one of the best deals in motor wheel combinations for indoor robotics. I'm going to show you why it's such a good deal, why it's going to save you a lot of time, how to hack it for your own purposes. You can find these wheel motor combinations for under $20 on eBay, or you may be able to salvage one from a Roomba someone's discarding. I've got a set here I'm going to mail to one lucky subscriber. I'll show you how you might be able to win at the end of the episode, so stick around and let's get right to it. Today we have a Roomba uh, wheel module. This is one of my favorite wheel modules to use for small robots. It's just super handy, it's very inexpensive, and it's much easier than putting this all together yourself. I know it's just a motor and a wheel, but it comes with a gearbox. It's got a Hall Effect encoder all, uh, already included for you and a wheel drop sensor if that's something you want to add to your robot so you know if it's starting to go off a cliff or some such thing. Uh, the only inconvenient thing about this module is the connector is not terribly convenient unless you have a motherboard you're willing to sacrifice as well. So I'm just going to show you how to take this apart and get to that connector and what all the pieces are inside. There's just a couple of screws on the top we have to undo, and I think there's one on the bottom. So with those screws out of the way, now you can carefully start to get this apart. It is spring-loaded because of the wheel drop sensor. Now I personally don't plan to use the wheel drop sensor for the project I'm taking this apart for, so I'm not going to worry about it. But you can, with just a little bit of finagling, be a little more careful getting it off. And it'll just be a little bit of a fight to get back on, but it'll go on the same way when you reverse these steps. So with that out of the way, I can carefully pull this apart. I'm going to set my spring aside. On the inside you can see uh, the parts and the wires. Um, here's the back side of our connector. Here's our wheel drop sensor, uh, a physical switch. So you got five wires going to the motor. Um, you got your A and B uh, power wires for your motor. And then you have um, your ground, your power, and your signal back from your Hall effect sensor. The Hall effect sensor goes low when the in the proximity of the magnet. And then over here for your uh, wheel drop sensor, that also just gets ground and its signal out wire. Now for what I'm going to do, uh, because I'm going to remove this connector, there's this little plastic piece down in the bottom. I'm going to pry that up and get it right out of my way so I can wrap those wires without binding. And once you get that a little bit loose, there's these two little pins that aren't too hard to get out that hold in the stock connector. I can just grab those, get those out of the way. And now we have our connector. Um, I tried, it almost looks like you can fit uh, your own connector in the holes, but they don't quite line up. So I just snipped the wires off and soldered a connector and the wires to a little surplus board I had like this with my own connector. I forget these connectors designation, but they're a 2.54 millimeter pitch, just like our standard jumper wires and our jumper wires plug right in. Alternatively, you could just snip the jumper wires and solder them right to the board as well and plug them in wherever you need to on your Raspberry Pi. How did I do this? So this is a little bit easier because I'm not worried about the wheel drop sensor and getting that spring back in. So I'm actually just going to snip that out of the way now.
and I can route this bundle of wire. I'm just going to get this one out of the way. I'm going to route the remaining bundle of wire right through this little notch. And then of course just put my screws back in. Now without the spring, your wheel is just going to kind of freely drop. I'm going to have some weight on it. If you wanted, I found that you can kind of drill here and just put a little screw in there um, and it'll keep it from dropping if you're really worried about it. I am not. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is on this for the pinout of, uh, of this wheel motor module. Your brown wires, like I said, are for your wheel drop sensor. You'll have ground going to it and when the wheel drops. Uh, I don't recall if it's normally open or normally closed, so you'll have to test that. Um, you'll get a low signal to your GPIO pin when the wheel drops um, or when it's up. I forget which. So here's a little close-up view of the standard connector that you're going to chop off. Luckily it's labeled, so it makes it really easy to get the pin out. Uh, the right and left wheels are the same. They are not mirror images. They're exactly the same. You have your red and black, your A and B wire. These are power for the motor, and they'll easily take 12, or I use a 14 4-volt DeWalt battery um, all day long, and that has not been a problem. The white wire is the 5-volt wire, and that is 5 volts going to the wheel module for the Hall Effect sensor. And that's it. That's all that's for. And the green wire, you can see it says ENC. That is your encoder signal going back to a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino GPIO pin, whatever microcontroller you choose to use. The brown wire is the wheel drop. It's labeled WD. And that's your signal going back to a pin. You're going to read that just like a normal switch um, that is pulled high and because you're going to pull it low with the switch. So you'll pull that GPIO pin high in your software um, or with a resistor. And then finally you have a ground wire. This gray wire is your ground wire. That is for both your switch and your Hall Effect encoder. And that's all there is to this wheel motor. It is super, super handy. It has some flat surfaces. Life will be a little easier if you want to get creative and use a 3D printer or something to make a mount. But I found that you can, with it apart especially, it's easy to drill a couple of holes and put in, I didn't bring a standoff, but put in a standoff or a couple of nuts. And this is a pretty darn good mounting point for a quick and dirty, uh, quick and dirty mount. A couple things before the giveaway. These modules have been standard on the Roomba since the Series 500. So if you've had a 500, 600, 700, or 800, they will work. I've heard but have not confirmed that the module is still the same for the 900 series. Also, you might be wondering about the voltage output from the encoder and if it's safe for your Raspberry Pi. The wheel encoder is a Hall Effect sensor and its output toggles between ground and floating. It never actually supplies positive voltage and that means it's safe to use with an Arduino that uses 5 volt GPIO pins or a Raspberry Pi that uses 3.3 volt pins. With both the encoder and the drop switch, don't forget to enable an internal pull-up resistor or supply one on the outside. If you choose to supply one on the outside, make sure you run it to 3.3 volts if you're using a Raspberry Pi. With that, let's talk giveaway. I've got a set of Roomba wheels that I'm willing to send one lucky winner. To win, all you've got to do is be a subscriber and leave a comment below. When I do my next video, I'll randomly choose one person with an online comment picker, and that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, good luck everybody, and I will see you next time.